Hey, I'm Kobe Dev, and you're watching a video about the most disliked and unused programming languages. Some are made as a joke, some as a challenge, as some are just straight up terrible. Without any further ado, let's get into it. The first language I'm going to be covering is called Brainfuck. It's a language created by Urban Euler, probably botching that pronunciation, mainly to test the boundaries of how far you can actually go when it comes to a programming language. It is known for its extreme minimalism, because it consists of only 8 main commands, a program counter, and a reference to address. While Brainfuck is true and complete, which basically just means it can solve any logical problem, it was not designed for practical use, but rather as a joke for programmers. Here's a snippet of Brainfuck code that sums two numbers together. As you can see, the code makes total sense and I understand everything that's going on. As a comparison, here's a super complicated Python code just to see how these two languages differ. The creator's goal in actually making this language was to have something that runs faster than anything else. As you can see from above, it looks pretty simple, ignoring the absolute inability for it to make sense though. But apart from that, there are only like 8 characters total, resulting in a super fast runtime. This is where the good qualities end though. Brainfuck's inefficiency and limited input-output capabilities contribute to its impracticality for serious programming. Most people learn language as a challenge, not as a genuine solution to whatever problem they may have. Next up we have Solidity. Solidity is a programming language used to make smart contracts for the Ethereum cryptocurrency. You may be wondering what a smart contract is. Don't worry, I was too. Imagine a smart contract as a digital version of a butler. You tell this butler what needs to be done, and once the conditions you set are met, it takes care of business automatically. So it's like having a deal with your friend. You say, if I lend you my lawnmower, you will return it by Friday. Now, instead of relying on trust or memory, you both agree to a smart contract. In computer speak, it's a little program that says when Friday comes, and I haven't received the lawnmower back, Please send me an alert. It executes the terms of your agreement without you having to chase your friend out. These digital butlers or smart contracts live on the blockchain. They're tamper proof and do exactly what you've programmed them to do. So there's no more relying on handshakes and promises, just clean automated agreements. Solidity is statically typed. If you don't know what that means, I'll quickly explain it to you with a quick analogy. Imagine you're baking a cake and you have a recipe that says you need a cup of flour. In a statically typed kitchen, you declare up front exactly what kind of cup you're using, which is referenced in the variable types. Is it a measuring cup or is it a coffee cup? The recipe, also known as compiler, checks this before you start baking the compile time to make sure you're doing the right cup for the job. So in a programming sense, when a language is statically typed, it means you have to specify the type of data a variable can hold before you actually use it. This helps catch potential mistakes early on, like trying to use a coffee cup for flour, when the recipe clearly stated for a measuring cup. The compiler plays the role of the recipe checker, making sure your ingredients or valuables are used correctly. While Solidity may be powerful, it has some security issues. Smart contracts written in Solidity can be vulnerable to bugs and security issues, leading to potential hacks or unintended behavior. Solidity, like many other languages in this video, is quite difficult to learn and read. It requires good understanding of blockchain concepts, which can often be like trying to understand hieroglyphics. One more downside to Solidity is once you've actually written your contract and you put it on the blockchain, it's like sealing it in a time capsule. You can't easily change it. If you discover a mistake or want to add something else, it can be pretty challenging. Alright, next up we've got Visual Basic for Applications, otherwise known as just VBA. While this is the most used one on the list, it is also the most disliked one on the list via ratio. It's got over 75% of users dislike this one. It's the programming equivalent of basically your weird uncle who insists on using a typewriter on, in 2023. So here's the overview on VBA. It was initially based on Visual Basic 6.0, which is a language that even Microsoft is trying to forget, and then kind of built up on it, trying to suit Microsoft Office applications like Excel and Word. Now, don't get me wrong, VBA does have its benefits. 
it is the go-to tool for automating tasks within office programs but and it is a big but this isn't a language you'd go out of your way to learn and develop something in just reading it is known to give you a migraine vba is well known for its security vulnerabilities mainly in macros which are pre-built commands you can use in word and stuff sure you can disable macros or whatever and try to remove the danger but the fact that vba has a history of being a breeding ground for malware is in itself a red flag the version history is only a series of small updates trying its best to stay relevant none of which actually have addressed the major security flaws still present to this day vba 7.0 introduced 64-bit support which by the way has been in computers for a long time but it's like adding wi-fi to the rotary phone Yes, cool and all, but no one actually uses it anymore. In a world where programming languages evolve rapidly, VBA stands as a reminder of the past. It failed to update itself to the present and as a result got left in the dust. So unless you're planning on developing complex Excel spreadsheets or a macro or whatever to help you with a specific problem at work, maybe explore some more modern languages. Your head will appreciate it and you won't have to deal with a language stuck in the dark ages. Next up, we've got Malbolge. It's basically the final boss of all programming languages. It is a language made by Ben Olmsted in 1998, and the name actually refers to the eighth circle of hell, called the Malbolge, spelt with an extra E. It's created simply to see others suffer in agony. And you know how normal people count base 10, so that's 1, 2, 3, etc, etc, 101, 102. And binary, the ones and zeros, is base 2. Well, this guy thought it'd be funny to make all the numerical calculations in base 3. He also thought it would be a funny idea to make the experience of coding more like the password game because you have to essentially fight the code which tries its best to alter itself as you write it. It takes the complexity of earlier languages like Brainfuck and Befunge and cranks it up to an extreme level. Instead of keeping the one simple aspect of Brainfuck, Malbolge has a lot more than 8 operations you have to remember. So this has literally no upsides whatsoever. I beg you not to use this language for your own sake. Unsurprisingly, it took two years after its release for the first Malbolge program to emerge. And interestingly, its creator Ben Olmsted never wrote one himself. Later on, a mental hospital attendee, Lou Sheffer, did a deep dive into Malbolge, offering it help for others and even creating a program to output a user input. In Python, we can see this is basically a one-liner and uh, definitely would recommend Python. Despite its intentional complexity, people with too much free time gradually understood how to use it more and more effectively. A whole seven years later, a correct 99 bottles of beer on the wall program was created. The program basically outputs the lyrics to the song 99 bottles of beer on the wall. People often take up this challenge to write this program in different languages, showcasing the language's syntax and features. And it's also an exercise that involves loops, if statements, and a general knowledge of the program's operations. In 2020, Camilla, not pronouncing your last name, pushed the boundaries further by creating a working interpreter in Malbolge. If you've got no idea what an interpreter is, think of it as a language translator for your computer. When you run your code, the interpreter goes through it line by line, translating each instruction into assembly code that the computer's CPU can then transfer into binary code, which it can then make instructions and do the processing. The only good quality of this language is that chances are anyone who sees your program won't know what the f is going on, which will either leave them impressed at your magnificent skill or encode your program, basically making it look like hieroglyphics if you want to hide something or doing something malicious. While it isn't fully true to say that no one uses any of these languages, oftentimes there is a much simpler solution that involves a more popular and easier to use language to solve basically the same problem as if not more effectively. That's all for today guys, hope you enjoyed the short documentary style video. If you want me to make a sequel to this, cover some more languages. Make sure to let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed, just drop a like, you know, it helps my channel reach others. It means I can get more motivated to make more content for you guys, which is a big thing right now. If you're feeling extra generous, subscribe to me. The fact that you've made it to the end means more to me anyways. Anyways, enough babbling about. Get out of here. See ya.